Hey guys, welcome back to another video, this is Dashcraft, and in today's video, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how you guys are able to make your own warning system for your Discord bot, and I'm pretty sure this is gonna be a whole series since it's a very, very big deal, and a lot of people are looking for this kind of video so they can learn how they can make their own warning system for the Discord bot. In fact, this is, this is a very good system, it works for the database, and it's very, very advanced, so in case you don't have any understandings of this before, then I will really recommend you guys to learn some basics about Discord.js. If you guys want to see more videos like this, I encourage you guys to write down, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and go ahead and comment down below if you have any ideas for next videos, or maybe go ahead and tell me what you think about today's video. Also, if you have a Discord server, if you have any problems, you can just go ahead and join, and I will help you personally over there, or the other staff team on my Discord server will help you over there. The warning system that we're going to do in today's video is going to require a database called MongoDB, since MongoDB is an actually pretty good database, and it's actually pretty, pretty compatible, in fact, with Discord.js. So we're going to use MongoDB for today's video. Make sure you know how you can set up MongoDB database. If you don't know, I'm going to put a link on top right you can just go ahead and click it and you can watch the mongodb video all right so let's just start off by first making the command that we want but before we actually start making the command which you're going to call it warn probably we're going to go ahead and first make sure we have a database so as you can see i have my index.js file so as you can see i have already my connecting to my mongodb database and like i said if you know how you can use mongodb i also suggest the video on top right you just go ahead and click it and you will be able to see a video about how you can set up that kind of stuff just go ahead and connect your mongodb database here and ah uh, that's pretty much it that's all we want for index.js next thing you gotta make sure is go into your models folder if you have a model folder then you're fine if you don't have a model folder then i will encourage you to go ahead and make a folder right now and call it models the reason we're making this folder is because we need a schema for our whole discord bot and the schema actually is very important for database very important it's required if you want to make a database you know make a data in your database basically if you get what i mean so make sure you have this folder so once you're here you just have to go down and make a commands folder if you don't have a commands folder it's fine you just go down and do it whatever whatever you have it so for example i have a whole handler for my discord bot so i just have to go down and make a command simply i'm just gonna make the command called warn .js. so i'm just gonna go ahead and first take a test command here and then literally remove here because we don't need anything here we're trying to make a whole everything new so we just go ahead and call this warn we don't need anything here as well there we go literally all set so now we just have to go ahead and do simply one thing so let's just go ahead and first start off by simply making a model so i'm just gonna call this model pretty simple i'm gonna call it um this is a pretty simple name i already made it actually it's called mod schema it's pretty important if you don't have a mod schema then you should probably make it so as you can see i have a mod schema here you can call it whatever you want to call it but that will be actually very important since you're trying to have a schema as you can see i have everything here we have the guild id we have the user id we have the punishments so the punishments are actually where we need for the warning system so whenever we mute someone whenever one warns someone it will actually save to the array and the array will be actually for every single guild so let's just say you you the person who actually got warned so for example we have the guild id we have the user id and we have the punishments so we need this three th things for our warning system make sure you put them all and you'll be all right this is something very easy i i'm probably sure this is not something very hard it's just basically saying the whole person is gonna get you know gonna reuse the id or whatever we be used it's gonna actually get the um the person who actually mentioned so let's just say my discord server i'm mentioning someone and i'm trying to give except mentioning i use their name except mentioning them or i just use their id so we will actually pretty it's, it's a pretty good system if you don't want to ping them so just make sure you have this by the way if you don't know i have a whole source code in my description just go ahead and check it out make sure to watch the video by the way it's not good if you just copy and paste because it won't probably work because i changed some stuff over there of course so we said who's gonna get born and now we just have to go ahead and give the reason but before we actually do that we just have to give this a permission so whoever have a manage message permission can use this command so for example in here i just give it this if the message that member that passed permission is manage message so let's just say the person who actually used the command doesn't have the manage message permissions or you can do whatever permission you want it all depends on you you just have to go down until you're not allowed to warn members and it's pretty important you just have to go down and do that since you know not you don't want everyone to warn each other for no reason so that's pretty much it and the next thing we're gonna do is basically making a very good important thing because i seen people warn themselves and we don't want to actually warn them so you know ourselves so basically we just have to do one thing if message dot author that id was actually equal equal to the person we're gonna warn which is gonna be to warn that id then it will actually return it and it won't do anything or you can just go ahead and send a message that you cannot warn yourself but i'm gonna return it yeah, it's not really important for me here just 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 to show your purpose and now the important thing we need to make sure about it is the reason so the reason is gonna be args that the slice one join this so basically whenever you know let me just show you an example so in here as you can see i have my message i'm trying to warn someone warn hello for example like warn my friend for example i don't know 
um, it's just an example. So let's just do them. Yeah. And then the person, the, the reason that we're going to put in here is going to be the arg1, basically, if you get what I mean. So arg0 is here. The arg1 is in here. But the problem is whenever you're trying to do hello and bye, do you see this spaces? This is not, it doesn't count. This is the arg number two. This is number three. We don't want it to happen. So we told about that after the arg one, everything is going to be counted as the same slice. So it won't actually count it as another argument system. But you just have to make sure you have a correct arc system. My arc system especially is actually pretty simple. Uh, I just give it a, you know, message array and the args. I, I always use that system because it's the best and the easiest system and the most compatible one. Just go ahead and do that. So the next thing we need to make sure about, well, we don't have to really make sure about is saving the database basically. So uh, like I said, the schema is, I don't know why I said schema. The schema is very important since we're trying to, as you can see, the guild ID, we've been trying to save the guild ID, the user ID and the punishments. But we also wanted to say that if we already have a data from this schema, then we don't have to make a new one because we already set everything. You know what I'm saying? So first, we just have to make sure that we have a data. And first of all, before doing everything, we have to also require this in our commands file. The reason for that is basically you just have to make sure that you require the schema so you will actually be able to use that schema. You know what I'm talking about? So for today's purpose, I'm going to call it punishment. As you can see, I have, I'm going to require everything here. And um, so it will basically goes to the mod schema and it will actually get the punishments from, you know, everything from that. But the problem right now is we just got the schema only. So we are not actually getting anything from it. So for doing everything that's, so as you can see, I have the data here. I said, let data is await punishments of find one. So the punishments are the warnings, basically. The punishments are in the mod schema. And then as you can see, I said, let data, then we use data in our code. Then it will actually find one of the guild ID and the user ID, which is going to be a 2180. If it doesn't found it, like basically if there, there was no data, then this means that we haven't already added anything to our database. And the guild ID also is not founding anything. So first of all, we check in for the guild ID. And the next one is the warn, the person who actually got the warning. If there was already a person in our database who was actually warned, then we don't want to make a new one. You know what I'm saying? You just got to edit the old data basically. So also we just have to make sure that there is a reason. So we just have to go ahead and do, if there was no reason for our warning, then it will actually say return. Um, message the channel is saying, honestly, this channel, no reason. So we basically thought that there was no reason basically. So now we just have to go ahead and give us a very if and else statement. So it's just basically if there was a data, then do this else. Also, I'm going to do again, if no data at this time, the reason I'm, I didn't, I didn't just use else because I don't want to every single thing happens. You know, it's just, you know, I, I want to make it a little bit more specified Encoding is always good to be specified about this kind of stuff. If you just put else and it could be a thousand possibilities, you know what I'm saying? We have to make this work as good as possible. And else is always giving us a thousand possibilities and there's like no way you can actually find what is the possibility since there's a lot of things that could happen. But we just wanted to have either a data or there was no data, you know what I'm saying? That's what I'm trying to say. And that's pretty much it. So let's just start off by if there was no data first, because it's already, you know, a little bit, because it's a little bit easier to understand. Let's just go ahead and put this here. As you can see, if there's new data, new punishments, and it's gonna first of all save the guild ID, then the user ID, which is gonna get it from the tool one here, and then it's gonna give the punishments. So the punishments are actually the array that we use in our schema. As you remember, I'm not sure if you guys remember that, but it's pretty much here. As you can see, this is the array. The reason we're using an array because we're trying to put, if you want to put multiple warnings, then it will be really helpful. So first of all, it's going to be punish type, warn. The moderator is going to be the person who did it actually, message the authority. It's pretty good if you want to know who actually did this stuff. And the reason in here is going to be the reason. The reason we're going to put, as you can see, the reason here. And it will actually save the punish type and, you know, stuff like that. Easy as that. So you just have to go ahead and put this punishment. And the reason we use this because it's an array, we arrays and use this kind of stuff. I don't know what to call it in English, but yeah, don't judge me, all right? So there we go. Now we just have to go ahead and save it easily. So we just have to go to a new data that's saved. So once we've done this, we just have to go ahead and um, as you can see, I have everything. I don't think there's something special about here. So, but um, yeah, we just have to also send the message. So we just do message the channel at send. And then we just have to go ahead and send the, um, let's send warning to warn for this for a reason let's just call it uh 
the reason basically there's nothing else to worry about so let's just do that i'm also gonna make it a little bit organized there we go there's two things here uh, i forgot to put this one here there we go so done easy as that so now we're gonna make sure that whenever we have the data already as you can see let's just say we already saved this kind of data we don't want to do that save the data again so for doing that we're gonna use the unshift method in databases so we're gonna use data.punishment.unshift so the punishments we already organized you know so for doing that we just have to make sure that we unshift it since we're trying to add a new one unshift actually adds a new one to the array it's a very good pretty good method for mongodb and that's why we're using it so we just have to go ahead and give this a reason again warn the uh, moderator everything is simple that we did in here uh but yeah that's pretty much it you just are gonna save it and it will literally work without any problem so let's just go ahead and uh, for this time actually we didn't use the new data since we're just trying to modify stuff so yeah that's pretty much it so now we just have to go ahead and again give this here and i think that's pretty much it guys literally I think that's pretty much it. There's nothing else you guys need to be worried about. We got everything in here. Let's just go ahead and try this out. So, like, let's just gonna warn. Um, I'm gonna warn my friend um, for no idea. Warned, yeah, for no idea. Simple as that. Uh, we can also check the database if it's uh, he's probably saved the database because I don't I don't have really show it, but I'm gonna show it right now. It's, it's probably save the data like there's no way it doesn't save the data but um yeah let's just go ahead and go to the database uh mongodb oh well yeah of course i i expected that it was online <laughs> so here we are in my database and i'm just gonna go ahead and go to the moderation one two three and in here if you just go ahead and check there we go we got the guild id user id um the user id is basically the person who actually warned so it's uh gavin so if i copy the id as you can see the id is the same thing the guild id and the punishment so we got the object here the every single warning we're gonna do is gonna be an object and that's how the warning system works guys pretty simple there was nothing everything was as straightforward easy as that thank you guys for watching today's video if it helped you give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel and go ahead and post, turn on post notifications and be ready for another episode because i'm gonna go ahead and upload it very very soon it's gonna be for the viewing the warnings which is gonna be the warns command it will actually view the warnings of the person thank you guys for watching today's video this is dash prep i'm out All right, guys, welcome to my beginner's programming tutorial. We're going to create a simple program. All right, first we're going to type in public class program, then public static void main string args. You know how it goes. Then import in this old ass outdated library from like 1994. Oh, yeah, by the way, we're using Java 7, not Java 8, so sorry if you have to start over. All right, and then I'm going to copy and paste this giant chunk of code. Uh, what this does is like, uh, it like makes your computer do stuff. Um, put that in your program and then compile and execute it. And there we go. We've created Minecraft.